Hello everyone, welcome to part 9 of Ranking the Prices Right Pricing Games. I'm Cindy Seidelman and we're almost there. We're going to finish the rest of the 90s, we're getting to the 2000s, and I think the next video might be the last we ever do from the Bob Barker era of The Price is Right. have to do more research. I think either 10 or 11 is the last, then we're full on in the Drew Carey era. So, let's get started by talking about a game that was supposed to debut a year before it did, but it was retooled. And it came to be one of these, one of the more popular pricing games, and that's It's in the Bag. Now, It's in the Bag is played for sixteen thousand dollars. You see six pricing, six six grocery items, and five prices on the podium. All you gotta do is match the grocery item with the actual retail price of the item. If you do that you win cash upwards up to $16,000. Usually goes least expensive, most expensive, and then three more in the middle. You know, get the least and most expensive. You know, you're kind of guaranteed 2000 doubling each progressive one, and it gets harder the more you go. Not only in terms of money, but, you know, there's always that one item that, could tr that tricks you. It's a really clever cash game for the price is right and it's one of my favorites because it takes a lot of skill to win and it's also really exciting when somebody's risking eight thousand for sixteen thousand and you're not knowing if they're gonna pull it off or not i mean you don't know if it's going to be the other item and that they have the dummy item in the sixteen thousand dollar bag i just love it's in the bag and I'm glad it's still around. Now, a couple of weeks later, they debuted another cash game called Fortune Hunter. It debuted November 21st, 1997. And it's played for $5,000 and four prizes. Now, in order to figure out which of the four prizes... Now, each of the four prizes has a box beside it. And inside one of those boxes is $5,000 in cash. So what you must do is eliminate the three bad boxes by the clues that Bob Barker reads out. With those clues, you're supposed to eliminate the wrong boxes, the empty boxes. And then it comes, then when there's one box out, it gets wheeled out, you lift it up. And you'll see if there's money inside. If there's money inside, you win the 5000 all the prizes. It is an okay concept. This would be revisited with half off. But I guess the confusing nature of the game with the clues. And it never really clicked with anybody. It's not a bad pricing game. It's just not really that good either. So it only lasted two seasons on the show before it got retired. Which I can understand. And then you have debuting... Okay, now I screwed up on the picture. It should say March 10th, 1998. Not 97, 98. And that is line them up. You are shown three small prizes and then the car. What you do is you take the cost of the three items and you turn them into the price of the car. For example, take a look at the picture. We got tools, which are $789. The second digit will be seven, eight, or nine. The, uh, the electric uh, shavers, $37 will be a three or a seven for the third digit. And then the fourth digit which is the keyboard, uh, be a six, a five, or a zero. Using those numbers, you fill in the amount of the car. If you're right on the first try, cool, you win the car. If not, you're shown how many you have right. And then with that information, you, can de you have to decipher which one you need to change or which ones you need to change. 
in order to win the car the second time. It's an interesting variant on a couple of games. You know, Temptation Springs fine with the uh, different numbers to fill out the price of the car. You know, there's a little bit of squeeze play in there, a little bit of switcheroo. Uh, actually, I'd say the big one is switcheroo. But instead of one digit and five items, you know, it's three digits in the car. Or split decision. It's a it's an interesting game. It's okay. It's not one of my favorites, but I'm not going to complain too loudly about it. Then we move on to Clearance Sale. This debuted uh, at the beginning of you know September 22nd, 1998. Okay, you are shown three items, and you are shown three items sale prices now there's one sale price that works with all three items there's one sale price that works with only two items there's one sale price that only works with the most expensive prize so the way this works is kind of like easy as one two three but a little more complicated than easy as one two three so you need to put the lowest sale price with the lowest item the set the middle sale price with the second most expensive item and the top sale price to be with the most expensive item you get it correct you win all three prizes i'm not a fan of this game you know it's just a, a more complicated easy as one two three and that didn't gel with me set looked nice but it's uh, it's a no for me dog is it one of the top 10 worst no but I thought about it and then we get to a clever one in one wrong price this debuted shortly after clearance sale did October 23rd 1998 and to be honest when I was redoing the list I almost forgot it. So normally, the take a look at the bigger ones that I had listed. I had to squeeze in one wrong price because I accidentally forgot about it while I was looking at the timelines. So debuted October twenty third, nineteen ninety eight. Still currently thriving in the rotation as by this photo right here, which wasn't taken too long ago at time of recording. I think that was a February edition of Price Is Right. Anyways, uh, you're shown three prizes and three prices. One of them is wrong. You got to come up with the one that is wrong. They'll reveal the right price and you win all three. Think of it as a very almost expensive. And I have no problems with this game. Absolutely none. It's basic, simple, easy to understand. What more could you ask for? And then we have a nice little fun one, nice little fun quickie game in Pushover. Debuted March 3rd, 1999. It's quite simple. You got a row of numbered blocks, and there's a blue window. You got to push, not pull, push. The price of the trip or prize that you think goes with the item in that blue window. And it's called pushover because once you push blocks off, they fall into a nice little bucket presented right there. And you can't push them back in, yet you can only push them out. So if you get it right, you win. It's a nice little quickie game. And it kind of reminds me of a game like Bump. You know, where the title is aptly named for the game itself I just like this game I really do it's simple no complaints for me and now we get to another fun game that I really love and that is let them roll I'm showing two photos of the different set pieces that they use like originally it was a smaller set piece with you know there's not much of a rolling object because one can pull it down and it could just drop but with let them roll they actually 
the dice do roll a lot more and makes it more exciting. Anyway, you're shown three items. You're given one roll, an opportunity to win two more. And with the grocery items, you have to determine which, if the next item is higher or lower than the one before. You know, kind of like card sharks. If you're right, you get an additional roll. If not, you just move on to the next item. So on the sides of the dice, three of them have a car. One of them has $500. Another one has $1,000. And the third one has $1,500. And there are higher dollar amounts for special shows. Like Big Money Week uh, had like bigger dollar amounts. And it does get quite exciting. Anyways, you roll the dice and you have the option to take the cash that's on there or risk the cash to go for the car. And it's a great game. I mean... At the very least, you're walking away at 500 bucks, which is not a bad consolation price. I mean, I know punch a bunch is low is a hundred, so winning 500 on the price is right. I'm not going to complain too loudly about that, and it's just fun. It's one of the best car games they have out there, and I just want it played more. Then we have the next one, the first one. I think this is the first one to debut in the year 2000 or whatever Conan O'Brien did. It is Flip Flop. Now, the, the price that's originally shown is wrong. You can fl flip the first two digits of the price or flop the last two digits of the price or flip all four digits. So using the example photo that I have, 75 would become 57, 61 would become 16. If you want to flip both, it becomes $5,716. So you either flip, you flop, or you flip flop. And if you get it right, you win. Now, there is an infamous moment from this game, which also kind of inspired a set design change. Because for the longest time, the reveal button was in front of, was right there. Well, all you gotta do is just look up Flip Flop Cheater on YouTube, and you'll see why it was redesigned to a plunger on the side of the prop. No, right under where Flip is, and it's a plunger coming out the side, which Drew or Bob would push to reveal the right amount nice little quickie game i enjoy it. now starting in the year 2000 you're gonna start to see a lot more spectacle games come out and that is these are games that aren't played quite often like they're only played like once or twice or maybe three times a year the first one like this is triple play debuting October 2nd, 2000. Now, this is the game where you could win up to three cars. Well, I can't say up to three cars, where you could win three cars. Can't win one, you can't win two. It's an all-or-nothing game. Now, for each car you're shown, for the first car you're shown, two prices, and you have to pick the actual retail price of the car without going over. If you do that, you move on to the second car, and the second car has three prices. Same rules apply for the first one. And then you come to the, what we're showing in the photo, four prices for the last car. You have to pick the actual retail price of the car without going over. Or the price of the car close without going over. And I love the spectacle of it. It doesn't get played that much. But when it does get played, it's an occasion. Is it hard? Of course it's hard. It's supposed to be hard. I mean, they can't just give away three cars willy-nilly. But I think people over-exaggerate how hard this is. You have to go through a 1 and 2, then a 1 and 3, and then a 1 and 4. So, with the various patterns that you can use 
it's about a 1 in 24, 1 in 36 shot that you get all three. But it doesn't matter. It's pure spectacle. It's like pay the rent. And I have no problems with pay the rent. I have no problems with triple play either. I mean, it's nice to see the Price is Right have these spectacle-style games. Like, uh, you could consider Golden Road nowadays a spectacle game because of how rare it's played. Because of the big item that they have at the end of the Golden Road, which is anywhere from 60000 to upwards of over $100,000 for, like, a um, Corvette or a Cadillac or a big motorhome, which I have seen them give away. Or a big old boat. But that's my defense of triple play. It's a pure spectacle game, and it's still a good game. Because remember the heart of the show. Get to the closest to the actual retail price without going over, and that's what triple play is. Then we have a show that has gotten a game that's gotten quite a bit of hatred from the community. That's too much. It debuted April 19th, 2001, still in the rotation. You are shown prices that aren't correct to the car. Now, the object is to find the act, the first price that is just over the amount of the car, where you say in an enthusiastic voice, that's too much. Normally, people go, that's too much, when they should be yelling, that's too much! I ain't yelling. It's, you know, I got other people in the house, so I ain't gonna yell. Anyway, it's a quick car game compared to other car games that we see played. It's not the best pricing game, mind you, but I don't hate it as much as other people do in the community. I mean, if you can figure out the cl the price of the car, if you could, you know, guesstimate, like the first two digits of the car. Let's say if it's a, you think it's a twenty four thousand dollar car, twenty three twenty four thousand dollar car. If you see a twenty four pop up, you yell, "That's too much," or anything above. Uh, 23 or 24 you yell that's too much and I think it's just the well I adjust myself and seating wise I think it's because people get nervous in the studio and I don't blame them but I don't hate that's too much I honestly don't I think it's a decent game not the best not the worst it's a decent game well, that's uh, the 10 for this time around. Let's go to the rankings. We have gone through 90 pricing games in the show's history. And I will say that the bottom 10 didn't change from last time. Joker still not, still worst. Then Professor Price, Double Digits, Bullseye 72, Shower Game, Telephone Game, Mystery Price, On the Nose, Secret X, and Gallery Game. Then we have Finish Line, Yes, I put clearance sale below that's too much for this big reason. Way too confusing for its own good and really obsolete when it started because we had easy as one, two, three. Balance game, five price tags. Fortune Hunter was way too confusing for its own good. That's why it's number 76. Pick a number 75, Double Prices 74, Switch 73, Side by Side 72, Walk of Fame 71. Then we get Give or Keep, Trader Bob, That's Too Much 68. Remember, I didn't say it was a good game, I said it was okay. Then Add em Up, One Right Price, Poker Game, Credit Card, Blank Check, Split Decision, Two for the Price of One. Line em Up 60, remember, okay. It's a decent game. It's not a great game. Easy as one, two, three. Flip flop. Quick game. I enjoy it. Magic numbers. Squeeze play. Grocery game. Hurdles. Freeze frame swap meet. One wrong price at 51. It's just a decent quick play game. Kind of like most expensive. But I like most expensive a little bit more. 
Then we have Bump at 50, Hit Me, Cover Up, Barker's Markers, Take 2, Super Saver, Bullseye 76, Check Out, Barker's Bargain Bar, Penny Ante at 41. Then we have Make Your Move, Buy Your Sell, Push Over at 38, Shopping Spree 37, Three Strikes 36, Safe Crackers 35, Danger Price 34, Phone Home Game 33, 32 is Now or Then, 31 is Switcheroo. Then, as I accidentally misclick buttons, uh, High Low 30, Lucky 7 29, Most Expensive 28, Pick a Pair 27, Shell Game 26, It's Optional 25, One Away 24, Range Game 23, Bonus Game 22. I have triple play at 21, just for the spectacle of it all, and I do enjoy triple play. Then we have card game at 20, 10 chances, any number, race game, spelling be hole in one or two at 15. Let them roll is at 14. I really love let them roll. Then we have master key, money game, and pathfinder, which means we have a new member of the top 10, and that is it's in the bag. Then we have Dice Game, Grand Game, Punch a Bunch, Super Ball, Temptation, Clock Game, Cliffs, Cliffhangers, Golden Road, and Plinko at number one. And that, folks, ends part nine of the rankings. Next month, part ten, and we will be winding down the Bob Barker era of The Price is Right. We'll be getting into the mid-2000s. I don't know if we finish up Bob Barker's era I think we get close I think we get to 2005 which means the next video will be the bridge from the Bob Barker era to the Drew Carey era it's going to do it for me I'm Sydney Sun. I'd like to thank everybody for watching part 9 if you liked what you saw leave a comment what your thoughts on the 10 games that we talked about you know subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you want all weekend videos the day before they go public, become a Patreon backer at patreon.com slash gameshowgumbo. One dollar gets you access to all the weekend videos the day before they go public. Well, until then, I'm Cindy Sadlin. See you next time. Bye for now.